That, thanks, Kyle, and and thanks everybody for making the time today. We're really excited to um, present you what we're up to with Buzzy, and um, hoping that it might help you along your way in terms of building your applications, as whether it's startups or even within businesses. So uh, we are, um, as Carl said, we allow you to take an idea, we allow you to turn it into an application. Um, for today's session, I wanted to keep it a pretty lo-fi and I've got a few slides, but really I wanted to jump around and show you a bunch of um, demos. But just before we get started, um, one thing, uh, when I talk about an MVP or minimum viable product, um, I think it's really important. There's a lot of definitions out there, everything from tappable prototypes and that, but I'm gonna use the Wikipedia one just for the, and it's it's something that has to work. It needs to be usable by your early customers. And that's that's a core um, element that we think is critical for startups and businesses when they're developing new products to, to be able to get something in the hands of users as soon as possible. So um, just, we see, I speak to a lot of um, startups and businesses and I see what they challenged with. Um, they, rarely have long expensive builds, um, finding the right skills, and obviously things are really expensive. I've seen so many startups and businesses who either can't afford to develop an MVP or only get one iteration of an MVP in before they run out of cash and can't afford to do more iterations. And one of the things that we believe is that um, the faster you can get something to market, um, that is the critical or essential element. And if you can launch fast and iterate often um, and you can get a product quicker to users and quicker to improve, that's really gonna help things. So the, the idea is that you might end up spending the same budget, hopefully less, but if you end up getting, let's say 10 iterations or more out to customers, you're gonna build something that's, that's so much better. So, for Buzzy, um, there's, we see three phases and these aren't always, it doesn't always work this way, but in general, this is kind of a good way to think of how the Buzzy tech could, could help companies. Um, the first level is the foundation or the AI smart, smart start and it allows you to start with a prompt and we're going to do that in a second. Um, and we'll actually create an application. I'm going to take you through each one of these phases. The second phase is once you've done that initial AI bit, we can then um, use other no-code tools either within Buzzy or Figma. Um, hopefully most of you are familiar with Figma. It's the number one UX UI design tool out there today. It's used you know, across the globe by, by millions and millions of people. Um, but it allows you to, you, you can take your Figma design and turn that into something that works. So the AI will produce your first version of the Figma file. Then you can take it, you can customize it, make it look beautiful if what the AI produced wasn't what you wanted. And then optionally, you can get to the extend phase. And that's where you start to bring in, like you might be developing what we call code widgets. Those are UI elements on the screen on the front end, or you might have backend integration with APIs. So again, this is a progressive um, approach. We often look at it as the goal of creating your application is like the think of it like climbing a mountain the goal is to get to the top and if we can accelerate that process with ai and with tools like the the figma and no code capabilities it's going to allow you to start much closer to the summit then if needed you can bring in the experts whether they be designers or developers to help you get to the summit and, and complete now obviously every application is different and the amount of effort and time for that and applicability of things is going to vary on a, on a case by case basis so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump out of presentation mode and we're going to look at um, a few different applications and actually start an application um now for today's uh for today's presentation uh, what I'm going to do is you can, if you go to Buzzy, um, it's free to start off over here. We have a two week free trial. Um, you can start with one of the example prompts. So if you think like there's recipe, you know, event planning, you know, movie repository, um, task tracking, but what I'll do for the purposes of, of this demo, I'm just going to get a, grab a prompt where it's behind the screen over here. Sorry, Zoom's highlighting this. Uh, and I'm going to just start off with a, with a prompt. Now, the example that I'm going to use is I'm going to use a stock portfolio application. 
Now your prompt, I'll talk about this in a bit. Think of it describing your application in simple terms. Think of it like speaking, like you're speaking to a five-year-old um, and you're explaining. So we said, we're going to create an app to track stock portfolios. Each stock has a name, ticker code, price history. Um, it's also, we also allow users to add stocks to their portfolio. Each stock portfolio um, includes a buy price date and number of shares. Now, uh, the only requirement once you've put that initial prompt in is you need to put your email address in. And what that will do is it'll send you an email that once you click on it, it will it will click the um, start the process off. So just give me one sec over here. Um, and I'm just going to click on this link and we're going to start that off. So depending on the complexity of the app, um, how good your prompt is, how good the AI is, it will take a varied amount of time over here. It says six minutes. It, generally for this app, it'll probably take probably closer to three or four minutes, but it's gonna go through a process. The first step in the process is it takes your prompt and it turns it into an app brief. Think of an app brief as like a mini specification that describes what's in your application. It's everything from the data relationships to the users, to some of the functionality and what you're trying to achieve. Um, once we've got that brief right, then it will create a data model. So if you're not technical, uh, a data model generally consists of data tables and there's relationships between those data tables. So for example, you might have in, in this example, you might have a portfolio and a portfolio might include many stocks. Um, now those um, are, are the data relationships. Once we've got those data relationships right, uh, we then take that and we generate a bunch of screens and fields and basically get everything working. And then the last step is we will then generate the um, the some sample data that so you can actually have a look at the, the application in context. This is all running in the cloud on, on Kubernetes infrastructure. So it's scalable um, horizontally and vertically. Um, and you can also optionally turn this into a native application, which then can go into the iOS and Android uh, app stores. So um, first time through, if you're using this wizard, it doesn't give you the, the chance to interject. Um, we'll have a look at this in the Buzzy workspace a bit later. You can actually um, get involved in this process and go through those stages step by step. Um, also, we have a Figma plugin that you can do this and you get a bit more granularity. We can do things like edit the brief and so on. So over here, you can see um, what it's going through. Now, while we're waiting for that application, we'll come back to it. What I thought I'd do is I'd give an example um, of an application that we created really, really quickly that went through these the three phases that I talked about. So this was a t-shirt application. Um, uh, let's just go over here. I'm going to say a dog surfing. Um, the idea was that you could give it a prompt. It would then go and generate a set of images. So it actually is calling out to an AI image generator. In this example, we're using um, Leonardo AI. And then um, from there, we give you the option if you want to then order that T-shirt, we're using an external service called Printful. I don't know if you've heard of Printful, but it allows you to order T-shirts and aprons and they'll ship, they'll print it for you, they'll ship it for you uh, and so on. So again, uh, let's just have a look at that. Okay, I like this one over here. Um, Let's preview that on the T-shirt. So now it's actually going out to Printful and it's getting a preview of that image on a T-shirt. Um, we kept this very simple for this MVP. Now, by the way, I thought of this MVP, I had um, COVID over the Christmas uh, period and I thought, hey, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna spend a couple of days creating this. And we literally, we created this application in a few days. Um, the, it's now come back from Printful and it's given us a preview of it. It's given us a, a quote. Um, I can then add it to the order. Um, this user interface, everything that you're seeing in the actual user interface, like the navigation, um, the ability to, to add things to orders were all created um, in Buzzy. So I'm just gonna add a medium um, quantity to that. And then I'm gonna confirm that. Now it'll go out to Printful again and I'll just put my address in here. Uh, uh, we, for the purpose of of the um, of the demo over here, we we uh, we just tied it to the US, but it, they actually ship. Um, uh, uh, 
think that is the right postcode because uh, it'll actually do a, a postcode validation and then we'll go back to Printful and then it will, um, if everything's valid, it will then create a quote for that. And then the last step of the process is, so it's come back for quote over here with shipping, with shipping costs. And the last step of the process is we can actually then go and pay and it will actually go out to Stripe. So this was like a very simple um, example of an MVP that we created literally in a few days, um, integrated with Leonardo AI, integrated with um, Printful, integrated with Stripe. And again, we, we, um, we, we use Buzzy to completely um, you know, create everything in terms of the user interface. So everything you see in front of you here is all Buzzy. Um, you know, if I go to like, to, you know, my images over here, I'll see this. So all these interface, you know, was, were created, um, completely in Buzzy and it's integrating with that. So that's just an example of an MVP. I'm going to jump back to, our uh, where is, where was I before? Here we go. This was the, um, stock application that we created before, and we're going to have a look at our phase one. Now, what it generated was a whole bunch of screens, a whole bunch of data tables, um, a whole bunch of components and all the fields in that um, to be able to create this application. And this interface um, now has on the right hand side, we're still in that phase of the, you know, the smart, um, the, 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 the first phase that allows you to um, look at this. So over here, we're going, we've got stocks um, in the, this portfolio. Um, now, by the way, we can do things in here, like I can um, change the um, theme to savory. Uh, very, um, there's, there's a whole series of changes that you can use the AI to change things like the data, uh, the look and feel, um, and, and all those capabilities, um, and all those all that functionality to get you very quickly to that first version of the application without you know, having to write a single line of code. And, and again, we're still in that in that phase one. So we've changed the look and feel over here to savory. Um, I'm not sure why that, uh, uh, that is, there we go. So these are the items in that portfolio. Um, it's got some Amazon, um, some Apple um, stock in there. I'm not sure why that's blank. I don't know if there's a, um, and then um, let's have a look at that. So just by the way, it's, it's, it's um, generated all the um, like the CRUD screens as well. Now, one of the things we can do over here is we can also come in and ask it to add some code widgets for things like tracking history and things like that. Now, to give you a, a I'll just show you in the Buzzy Docs over here. Um, there's a whole series of things. If you look at this example prompt section, and I'm going to give this in the presentation um, afterwards, I'll provide these links. These are the types of things that you can do with the AI. So obviously you could give it the initial prompt. It's got some samples over here. Um, you can tell it to change things like the data model. Um, so you can say, you know, add an extra field or remove something or add a whole data table. Like you could say, hey, I want to put reviews on stocks, add a, add a reviews capability to stocks. Um, you can then also make a series of design changes. So these are the types of things that you can um, you can do with design changes. There's some tips over here of how you can um, or, or target specific UI elements uh, on the screen. And then um, the, for more advanced features, if you want to generate things like code widgets and things, you can generate. You can actually get it to generate codes. But I'm going to talk about that a, a bit later. So, in terms of um, in terms of uh, building that application, you can get to like a very first version. Now, what I sort of see at at, the, at this stage over here for this foundation stage. Um, there's a couple of key things you want to think about in terms of prompting. So firstly, as I mentioned before, is treat it like a five-year-old. Explain the simpler, you know, a more specific way you just explain the components and functionality, um, the better the results with the AI. You know, this is brand new technology. Um, you know, prompting is an art and it's something that each of us need to learn. But um, again, one of those hints is just treat it like a five-year-old. Um, Focus on the data and the core functions. Don't focus on things like aesthetics at this point of time. That will come later. Um, again, you 
I showed you a set of example prompts. You can change aesthetic things like the look and feel and colors and that. But if you say to it, you know, make it look like site xyz.com or abc.com or whatever it is, it's not going to be good enough to understand that at this point in time. That will come in the subsequent phase, which is when you go into Figma. And I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so yeah, oops. Uh, um, so treat it like a treat it like a Fiverr. I'll do um, now. Certain prompts will re require a regeneration of the data model, which then forces all the screens and the sample data. So don't spend a ton of time, uh, you know, customizing that. And then when you, if you do prompt and it says, "Hey, are you sure you want to do this? This is going to replace everything," it will give you a prompt to make sure about that. But just to be aware, like in this first phase, in this foundation phase, you probably looking like the way I look at it is that this probably should be less than an hour that you're spending in this phase. You can get into what I call sort of arguments with the AI or like Siri. It's like, hey, call Dave. And it's going, oh, I'm calling Kyle. You're going, no, call Dave. You know, and you, you can get into those types of arguments. But if you recognize you in one of those cycles, just stop and just say, you know what? What the AI has created me is absolutely incredible as a starting point. I'm now going to go into the next phase, which is the ability to be able to, uh, the elevate phase where you're going to use Figma and no code to get to that next level of things. So, so that's really, um, you know, a number of other things you can do. Uh, so, so I've got too many windows. Um, so you can, you can come in, you can make changes, you can tell it to do things. Um, if I said it at a, um, you know, get, uh, you know, live stock feed, um, using, um, using an API, um, if you give it something that's too general for it to understand, it should come back to you and say, Hey, you know what? Um, we think that you should go and look over here in the documentation or, um, jump into Figma over here or, or or whatever. Now, just by the way, um, so here it says, hey, you need to do that. You can edit in Figma, and then it tells you about that things like the Buzzy REST API. Now, we're actually going to look at providing a, a history. I, I prepared that before the, the presentation because it takes a bit of time. Now, um, so let's go to let's go to phase two. So phase two, um, what this what you can do is if you go to actually let me show you in the workspace over here. So we're going to go back to the Buzzy workspace for this app. If you click on the design tab, by the way, if you look at what's happening behind the scenes, just before we do that, um, these are all the data tables that existed with some sample data. So these are real data. Um, you know, the database exists in the cloud. Now, if you think about if you what I just gave it in a prompt, if you gave that to a designer to design that look and feel, and then to a developer, you're looking at probably um, you know you know, days or a week to do the design. And then you're probably looking at, um, you know, days, weeks, maybe even longer to, to get them to build all the code for that. We just did that in, you know, under five minutes. So this gives you that incredible starting point. Like I said, it won't be perfect, but it's an amazing starting point. Now, when you want to get into the design phase, into this elevate mode where you can, where you can use um, Figma, you can come into this design over here. You can click on this it will open up what we call the Buzzy AI Toolkit. That's a standard set of building blocks that it will then be able to use the application that you created in your initial phase to generate the Figma file for you. Now, depending on what your application is, it might generate 30, 40, 50, 100 um, different screens. Um, to do that, we're going to use the Buzzy plugin. The Buzzy plugin for Figma um, allows you to take a Figma design and not only import it from the existing app, but it also allows you to mark up an existing design. Now, a little trick over here is you just need to go into wizard mode uh, and now I'm gonna import an existing app. It will hit the server and um, that portfolio tracker is the last one we just created. And I'm gonna click continue and I'm gonna click import app. Now, what you'll see is it'll start to create all the screens from that application that we created in the cloud using the AI. So this second phase is now going into Figma. Now, if you don't have Figma skills, um, you can definitely learn them. Otherwise, there are a ton of Figma skilled people out there that can help you take 
what Buzzy produces as a starting point and very, very quickly um, modify it to meet whatever look and feel you're after. So again, it's it's going to create, I can't remember how many screens we said there was uh, 30 or 40 screens over there. Um, it'll take a bit of time. Um, and it says about four minutes over here, but generally I find it's a bit quicker than that. There, there we go. So it's way quicker. It took 42 seconds. Um, so I'm going to click continue and we're just going to go to edit the app. Next to the wizard mode over here. So I'm just going to minimize this buzzy plugin. And if we look at this, this over here is all those screens in that stock application. Now within Figma, you can come in and you can, you know, apply like different themes. We've got a whole set of variables. Um, anybody who knows Figma is going to know how to use this stuff. Um, you can also, uh, if you looked at, let's say if we looked at this screen over here, and I'm just going to expand this out again, you can start with an existing Figma file. It's a bit of effort to be able to do this. It's way quicker than developing. Um, you don't have to start with the AI. But if we looked at, let's say, like here's a list of portfolios uh, here over here, this, uh, these these items um, map to elements. They've got um, they've been marked up to have actions. Um, they also marked up, uh, let's say, to have uh, um, to map to. Uh, uh, I don't know what, that's probably why that wasn't working in that. So let's have a look at one of the CRUD forms here. Uh, go down to, to stock details. So this is like a, a, a CRUD screen that was created for add new stock. You can see how the plugin is automatically marked up to that is the stock name field, which is a plain text field. Now, if you remember what I said before, um, the AI will generate the brief. This is like your brief or your mini spec. You can edit it here. Um, this is the data model. The data model will, will understand things like many to many, one to many relationships and many to many relationships. So um, over here, uh, and again, so again, it just depends on what the requirements and how well you describe that in your prompt. And the key thing is that if you wanted to make a change to this application, all you have to do over here is you have to come in and uh, let's say change an item in Figma, come to the publish screen, and then you can just update the app. You can either update the entire app or the single screen, and it will instantly be available um, as, as an updated um, application. And I'll show you that in, in a little bit. Just before we go there, now, remember I said in Figma, this, like, this is the starting point. This is based on this UI kit which are the building blocks to this application. And that's got everything from the colors, styles, and variables. Now, Figma is amazing at this and allows you to then very quickly come in and change the look and feel and the design of this. So again, even though it looks this particular way, if you wanted to give things like you know round borders and round edges and not dark or whatever, you can come in and do that using things like the Figma variables and these reusable components. And then everywhere where these components are used, these you know, molecules, organisms, and, and, uh, and, and you know, building blocks that were used to create the application, everywhere they were used in the application are instantly updated. So if you wanted to go and change you know, that, you would see it instantly updated in the rendition of, of your application. And then again, all you have to do is click publish and it goes live. Now I've seen a lot of startups who have gone down um, the road, created an MVP, created a data model, you know, been working with users and a few days or weeks in going, you know what, our data model's completely wrong. And, you know, in the old days, if, if for me, my background is development. If somebody said, hey, you know what, we've got to change the whole data model. I'm going, okay, yeah, that's going to take weeks. Okay, we have to change the data model everywhere it's tied up. Now, the ability to either use that AI to do that or to um, um, or the uh, use the AI to generate it again or to come into Figma, just come in and change the data model, update it, and then hit publish, and it's instantly available. You know, I, I saw a major one startup, major rework of their data model, and they had it done within a day. 
Um, you know, they had to rewire some screens and change some screens and things like that. But it was pretty much done by a designer, not a developer for that first bit. And then, you know, away it went and, and, and everything was live. So that's an amazing um, set of capabilities that you can use in the second phase um, of Elevate using Figma and the no-code capabilities. Now, um, one of the things you can that, that that you can do as well is you can you can set up things like the login flows and security and search. Now, one of the one of the um, um, I'm just going to go over here, and, and again, I, I've provided all these um, steps in here. We've got a whole series of either ready built apps or building blocks that are available as working Figma templates. So things like chat, if you want to add chat to it, look at that sample and you can bring that in. Um, again, so you could start with the AI, generate V1, and then start adding these other bits. We've got things like support ticket app, a CRM app, you know, training, the Buzzy Shirt app that I showed you, that's available as a template, um, you know, with shopping and e-commerce. Um, we've got um, componentry, like things like search and sort as, as um, examples um landing pages wizards so building blocks that you can use in it now so you don't have to just use the ai as a starting point ai is an accelerator at the start you can now bring these examples into figma obviously you can create them from scratch now to learn buzzy and the figma plugin is about an hour of lesson time to create a, from a blank figma file to a working crud application in the cloud um, there's six lessons total time one hour if you Figma folk don't understand that or you want to learn it, it's a great place to start. So that is um, that is uh, you know one of the key extension points um, and and resources that's available. Definitely um, you know come in and have a look at these Figma bits that are going to help accelerate that process for you and and help you move to get something in the hands of customers as quickly as possible. So let's. Um, Let's look at, um, let's have a look at it here. So just some of the items. So, um, you know, as I mentioned before, um, during this elevate phase with Figma and no code, you can start with Buzzy with the AI or you can start with your own design. Generally what we see is even if you start with the AI, you will be able to probably build it using the Buzzy toolkit faster than you could probably start with an existing file and mark it up. Because you, to mark it up, you have to say that's a screen, that's a field, that's a form, that's a repeating list, that's a field, you know, and you've got to go through each element in your existing Figma file. Now, to illustrate that, um, I've got a, an example. Um, Dave's, um, who's on the call from Buzzy team, um, what we've been looking at is taking like, existing products like Asana or, or um, you know, uh, like, for example, I don't know where they've got this movie site from. I don't know if it's Apple or whatever. And so just using the Buzzy toolkit, how long is it going to take to be able to do this? And Dave, I don't know if you're still on mute, um, but how long would it take, like, for example, to do this one, this one? And then I know there was the task one as well. We'll look at afterwards. Yeah. Um, Literally to build those screens from the from the Buzzy Figma Toolkit components is like I don't know fifteen minutes, half an hour for you know getting say that video one. That's kind of modeled generically on pretty much any video site in the world. They all kind of use the same look and feel and the same sort of layouts. But yeah, just dra it's dragging and dropping within Figma. If you know how to use Figma, it's drag and drop, tweak the components. There's your layout, and now all you'd have to do is go and mark that up with Buzzy. Um, you know, assuming you've generated your data models and stuff like that already. How long? How long did this, uh, like this Asana one, take? The, again, like you know, maybe half hour. Okay, so obviously it depends on the complexity of the application that you're building. Now, what's really cool over here is um, this is one that Dave used the AI to generate a. Which, which app was this? Yeah. It's, a, it's a task, like a project task tracker. Project task. That, you can see all the CRUD screens. And then I took one screen, like the project detail screen, and went, right, I, you know, this is the CRUD screen that Buzzy generated. It's sort of mobile first. It's got a feature image, which I don't really want and stuff like that. And I wanted it to lay it out more like a desktop, table-based with tabs, um, project tracking kind of app. 
So again, so, it's just drag and drop. There's a video. I'll, I'll post a link to the video tutorial of this. But the actual the actual dragging and dropping stuff was really quick. Most of the video is me explaining things. So, um, so Dave started. Yeah, so Dave started with the AI, and then so that 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 screen on the left over here was what the AI created. Then he used the UI kit to turn it into this, which was obviously a different look and feel based on the requirements that he came up with. This is it actually working. Now, obviously, when you open up, that's this screen of a year hasn't been done yet. But the key thing is that this is actually a working application that has full CRUD capability. Again, he hasn't designed, redesigned this screen that the AI produced, but he redesigned this one. Um, you know, it's responsive to a certain point. Um, it's, and it's marked up. I've added like the add task buttons linked up to the add task um, screen and all that. So it's 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 integrated into the app. And then you can yeah. go and do this for the other screens, just replace them with your own layout mods and whatever. Yeah. So if I so if again, if I was to if I was just to put some data in there, uh, start status, not started, uh, medium, uh, I'm not going to put an image in. Uh, those models over there, they are all working. Um, and again, there's that task that I just added. I didn't attach the image. I think so. Now. You actually, I actually just reminded myself that I forgot to show you something in the first um, phase, um, which was new functionality that we that we added. Um, so you can change the design elements. Uh, where are we? Uh, this is the portfolio tracker, uh, the AI editor. We've added this new edit capability where we've integrated with Adobe Express, um, and for the design elements on the screen in your first phase, like without getting into Figma, um, you can come in and um, so for example, this here has a design element. Um, you can um, use Adobe Express. Uh, Adobe Express is just a really easy tool. Think of something like Canva um, to be able to, um, you do need an account with Adobe Express, um, but it gives you uh, the ability to come in and uh, let's just say, uh, I wanna come in, I wanna add some media. Um, I'm going to do text to image. So you could obviously use anything out of there. Um, I'll just make that in here and I'll say um, stock broker on a beach. Uh, we'll choose a style over here, which is photo. Generate that image. So sorry, I'm going back to phase one. I just forgot to um, show you this in, in when I was demoing before. Uh, this is new functionality that you can do without having to get into Figma. Uh, let's just, uh, we'll just use that one. Uh, and Adobe have a whole bunch of templates and things. And then I can say, right, I want to. Uh, okay, uh, 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 and that will be able to change, uh, change my design. Um, you know, on the, on the fly without having to get into Figma. So again, sorry, apologies, I, I forgot that before, but it gives you an, an extra capability that you don't have to um, jump into Figma right at the start. And you'll see it should replace that image. Uh, there it is. And, you know, obviously, you know, you want to, I, I didn't spend any time getting like the right, you know, um, crop and stuff. So you can mess around with that. So um, back, to, um, back to using Figma on that, um, the ability to to take something and make it look how you want it to look um, is incredible. You can make it look any which way, and you're only restricted by your creative capability within Figma uh, in terms of making that look. So again, use the AI to generate something to start off with, and then um, use Figma to to take it to the next level and elevate it, and so on. Now, the other no-code capabilities that you can add, um, I mentioned before, there's a bunch of example templates we've got of these, but you can add things like login and security, um, search, chat, um, other UI patterns like uh, wizards or personalization. Um, obviously, the other one that we had a look at in the Buzzy shirt one, which is a, um, a, a ordering and checkout capability, uh, which we had integrated with Printful in that example. Now, the, the bits of information that I would recommend having a look at over here are obviously those Figma samples and then the Buzzy blog uh, and then the Buzzy marketplace. Now, 
one of the things you can do, let's let's talk about the next phase, which is the extend phase. Now, this is about adding things like code widgets and API. Um, the, um, sorry, someone need to go on mute. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so, so the um, the code widgets and that this is our third phase where you want to extend with code. So, remember this analogy of you trying to get to the top of the mountain by creating your MVP, and the AI got you to a certain point. Figma and no code got you to the next point, and now you need to bring in some code coding capability because, and again, this is totally dependent on what you're trying to do. So the, the example that I was going to show over here was um, so there's a few different examples. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, where is it? So let me go back over here. Go back to my workspace and Buzzy. Um, now, what I did just before, just earlier today, I literally just before the presentation, because this takes a bit of time, uh, I, I went through and I... Uh, I, I created a um, the stock portfolio app. And then I wanted to do that bit that I mentioned before, which was I wanted to, to go out to an API and fetch the stock history. So if I've got a portfolio over there, I can um I can um I can then have a look at that. So this was the um the the stock portfolio app. Let's have a look over here. Oh, so just give me a sec. This computers is going a bit slow. Um, so when we clicked on um, one of these, now, now this, you don't have to use coding to get started, but this is a coding task. And, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so what we did is we said, I used a prompt uh, for this code widget. Um, we have a, we have a um, co-pilot code widget that you can type a prompt in. And we said, for the ticker code, go and create this stock chart for the, whatever's in the ticker code. So if I go to Tesla, I see its stock chart. Um, if I go to, this is, and I said over the last 12 months. Um, uh, so although it's done it in reverse, um, I'm just looking, wait, is that right? 2024, yeah, so for some reason it's done in reverse. That's a really good point of why this is a coding task. So if I said, um, uh, let's go back a bit. So I forgot which one was in. So if I looked at um, that particular code widget, um, so let's say stock, and I can go to pro properties for this data table, and I'm going to go into the fields. We've got a code widget over here, which is this. Now this is again, this is a developer task. Again, we've got AI that will help you speed this up. So you can just give it a prompt, and I gave it a prompt something like. Um, I'll show you what the prompt looked like. I'll just paste this in. Um, it says something like add a stock history, uh, code widget called stock history price chart. In that field, use the following API to get the stock prices for the 12 months um, and uh, put that in store in a JSON object, which is why you saw it up there. Now I can go into Figma and hide that JSON, that, that field. Um, I just left it there for the demo. Call this third party API, replace the ticker code with, with the ticker. Um, this is just a demo one, so you guys can steal this. It'll run out pretty quickly. Uh, and then render a chart showing the history of the price chart as a line chart uh, for the last 12 months. So this generated this code that I could have written by hand. Now, one of the things that, that we've learned, like AI can generate a lot of code. Now, a lot of people say, okay, right, why would you need a tool like Buzzy and Figma and everything like that? Can't I just go into um, ChatGPT and just give it a prompt and I'll generate all thousands of lines of code? Um, I was a product manager at IBM. We used to do a lot of code generation. Great demo. But if you regenerate thousands or tens of thousands of lines of code, you're going to need a development, probably a large development team to be able to take that code and enhance it and maintain it. In this example, the majority of the code that was generated is not available for anybody to, to maintain. It's done by the Buzzy team. But there are manageable snippets of code that you can generate for customization. Like over here, there's, I don't know, what's that? There's 89 lines of code, which is totally consumable by a developer. Um, you can come in, you can see what was generated by the AI. The AI is not always right, um, but it's generated all this code on the fly 
and I could come in and do something up here. We could say, um, you know, uh, fix the order showing the uh, recent months on the left and uh, sorry on the right and the um, earlier months on the left now there's a bit of um there's a bit of playing around with this but this will actually go and regenerate this code uh that was originally generated by the ai or could have been handwritten um based on the instructions that I gave it. So again, I gave it the initial instruction to generate all this code. It's using the Buzzy API. Now, um, it, it'll take uh, probably a couple of minutes to do that. Um, if we looked at the uh, documentation over here, so if we looked at this, we've got advanced field types, we've got something in here called code widget. Um, this allows you to um, add functionality, custom functionality. And so things like, you know, complex search uh, is a good example of one where you might want a filter or, or something like that. Um, you might, it, it actually goes through another sample of um, adding uh, like a booking widget um, over here for like creating bookings. Um, there's also uh, a React JS example and a set of examples here. And again, that's why I said these, this extension bit is a coding task. Even though we've got AI, um, wherever my tab was over here, um, it went and generated that. I can update it. Um, let's go back and look at this. Uh, look at this code. Uh, let's see if it. Let's see if it fixed it. Um, let's click the share button. Let's see if it fixed that. Uh, let's stop price chart. Um, but. Use the AI as a co-pilot. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to get you started, but you, it is a coding. That, that code will need to be read, read, read by a developer um, to, to complete it. Let's have a look here. Um, so it's just taking its time. Let's see if I got it right. Hey, I got it right. <laughs> Let's put a comment in there. <laughs> I probably need to uh, take that comment out when it was generated. Um, but you can see over here, it's now going. So uh, uh, 2023 on the left-hand side and uh, 2024 on the right-hand side. So it's now fixed that, um, that bug that we had there before by just giving a simple instruction to the coding widget to be able to do that. So um, that kind of gets us through the um the three phases um again we, we've got some other capabilities we, we do have a rest api so you can call back in we have something called database rules so you can make external api calls to to external services so like the example that i showed you with the, the buzzy shirt app it made a call to leonardo ai to generate the images it made a call to um um it made a call to uh, uh, printful to get the print um, thing and then another call to Stripe. Now, you don't have to code those. In that example of the Buzzy shirt, we did those as code, as samples in Lambda functions. But we did another um, sample, which is definitely worth looking at, which is a pretty common pattern. Um, we did that. Uh, hey, it's Buzzy. I'm sorry, got... just my bad. I clicked on the wrong link. Um, but we did this uh, this blog article on creating a stock portfolio app. And then what we wanted to do was we wanted to take the stocks in your portfolio, give them to ChatGPT, and then allow you to come up with um, a one, three, and five-year um, recommendation based on those stocks in your portfolio. Now, this pattern applies to people who are looking at ways to integrate with generative AI to do all sorts of smarts as part of your application. But we didn't, in this example, we didn't want to use um, actual code to do that. We use another third party workflow tool, which think of it as, oh, oops, sorry, over here. So uh, it's called Respell. Um, now think of it as like something like Zapier or, or Make or, or one of those tools. Um, the, uh, we, we created um, a, what they call a spell, and that spell um, 
was initiated through the Buzzy API. When you click, give me the recommendations for this portfolio, it would then um, allow Respell to go and fetch the stocks from that portfolio. It would then um, put them into a, uh, a AI prompt over here. So if we looked at this prompt, it said, get the stock portfolio, which I got from Buzzy. And it said, um, act like a stock expert and give me a uh, one, three and five years. Now, obviously don't go buying stocks based on this prompt. It's just an example, but it, it gives you an idea of how you can build some an amazing technology integrating with third-party services like AI to be able to do that and letting Buzzy deal with all the user interface. Again, like this application, I just used this, you know, literally was done in like a couple of days um, and, and, and so on. So that's um, that's kind of the, you know, the, the core um, bits in the extend where you can start using APIs. Uh, we also do have a data importer. If you've got things like mass import of, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of records, we, we've got ability to um, pull that into scalable. Each buzzy system is a single tenant with its own database cluster that sits on the cloud. So you can scale it independently and it's all secure and, and everything. And it's, it's got its own compute and, and it's horizontally and vertically scalable. So that, that really wraps up the presentation of what I, hopefully I've given you some tools. We've got some time, maybe for some q and I'll try and answer. Um, Dave, maybe I don't know if you've got curated like some, some key questions, but I'd love you to give it a go. Um, we've also got some special offers, which currently are offering up to 75% off our plans. Please grab those because they're not going to hang around for long. Um, they'll probably be gone by the, by the end of the week um, um, as we go into the next quarter. So um, please go and grab them uh, while they last and, um, I, and reach out to us. So if you need a hand, just reach out to us. Uh, my email is adam.ginsberg at buzzy.buzz. You guys are all Australian companies. We love working with Australian companies. Most of our customers are overseas. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to get feedback from people. So thanks so much for your time. Um, I'm really excited to hear what you can create uh, with with Buzzy. Um, and maybe I've, I've I've left a few minutes for some for some Q and A. Uh, I'm going to look at the chat. Is it uh, David? Any questions I should ask? Um, yeah, uh, there's, there's stuff about the. Um... I guess the front end and well, more the back end platform, and also about owning IP of yeah, the apps so, that develop get developed with Buzzy. Yeah, so so everything that you develop in with Buzzy, and even though we generate the Figma files, those Figma files are yours, and that's your IP. Any custom code that you put in is IP. The Buzzy platform is a SaaS platform. It's like you'd be using Salesforce or, or something like that. That's going to be able to take your instructions that you give it through the Figma file and any other configuration that you do um, and interpret that and render that out as either a web app or a native application. Um, by the way, the native application has things like offline capabilities, has its own, um, uh, it's, it's based on React Native. Uh, no. So we don't give you the code. And the reason we do that, if like a lot of, you know, developers go, you know, we, we can give you the code. We just saw that as a, as a road to hell. Um, if we gave you, you know, the tens of thousands of lines of code that exists for Buzzy, you take that, you fork it, you find a bug, you come back to it and say, Adam, there's a bug. We fix it. And then we give you another 10,000 lines of code. It just becomes an impossible task for you to be able to merge that stuff together it's just once you fork that code and again i i mentioned before that i experienced this at ibm it's great demos but it doesn't work in in reality so from from that point of view um you know we think that for you know the small amount that we charge you a year which is a probably going to be a fraction of one developer um you know for our like enterprise plan it's about you know it's 500 a month and if you're not on a discounted plan um you know, it ends up being like six grand a year. Go and work out what a development team is going to cost if we generated and gave you all that code and you had to maintain it. So th that's where we see things at. Um, the, the underlying technology that we're using is best of breed. The database is Mongo. I got cassette, a single tenant. For every one of your deployments, you get your own database cluster. Um, we can give you access to that database cluster, but I'd probably recommend using our APIs. Um, it does everything. It's like encrypted at rest. Um, you can scale it out separately. 
Um, then there's the compute. You can break things into microservices with Buzzy. Um, you can have different um, you know, endpoints for different groups of users, and you can scale each one of them separately. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, it's all running in Kubernetes, so it's self-healing, it's auto-scaling, and 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 all that sort of stuff. Um, and then for what we create for the native application and that, which inter interoperates with the server and gets all the data and can work offline and that, um, that's, again, you would normally need two development teams to do both web and native. That's what we see. Now you can just have one and we'll create that app. We'll put the app in your app store um, and so on. So that's, again, um, the yeah so most of that we, i would recommend just using our apis to 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 get at the technology and then obviously one of the key uh, features are you can use the ai and the figma file to control the application as well so that figma plugin is like your code and that's all your ip so um what else have we got over here um the, the platform, so what's our platform usage rate limit? So everything is single tenant. So we don't currently, there are some limits, you know, in terms of the database and that, but really what we say is that like, if you hit those limits, then you just need to go up to the next tier. So um, if, you know, everybody's use case is very different. We've got users where there's, you know, they're taking tens of thousands. Like if you go into like a restaurant, you see those happy smiley faces. Um, it's an offline app. Like I gotta say, that thing uses very little CPU time, um, and it takes tens of thousands. But I've seen applications where you've got ten users doing things like geospatial queries and that that absolutely hammer the server, um, huge amounts of data and that. So every app is different, and and you know that's why we've done this as a single tenant solution. So you can scale out the compute and database to your requirements. You can also set up dev staging and production environments, and we handle moving the code between those so you can test in those environments. Um, Adam, we've got another question about the, again, going back to the IP, about the legal restrictions on if someone starts off in Buzzy, then closes their account, can Buzzy take their app and keep running with it? Or No, we're not, we can't do that. You can read our terms and conditions. We can't do that. That's your property. Uh, we can't, we definitely can't do that. Um, um, one thing I will say that if just on that topic of um, Figma has, there's a whole bunch of tools, including Figma have just released it. You can take a Figma file and turn it into code. Again, you need, you're going to need a, a developers or an army of developers to take that. So you can start in Buzzy, use the Figma file. And if you decide at some point in the future, you're going, you know what, we're just going to use Figma to turn that into code, you know, go for it. We can't stop you. That's That's your right to be able to do that. So you're not locked in from, from that perspective if you're going to use Figma. Um, you know, again, there's other tools out there like Zeppelin that do Figma to code stuff. And so on. Yeah, it's the same way the Buzzy Figma toolkit that we use to, that, you know, Adam showed you and we import the app into that and whatever. That's available on the Figma community. You can go and use that for your own stuff. You don't have to use it with Buzzy. Those files are out there. Any of those Buzzy templates, they're... They're free for all. You go do what you want. They're on Figma. They're in the community. People can go generate their own things from those. Hey, so I know we're at the top of the hour. So thank you so, so much for your time. And again, just reach out to us, please. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, uh, there's a question. Can you use to develop um, on your own domain? Yes. Um, so we have each of the deployments you can configure you for your own domain. Cool. Um, any other questions in there? Yeah, uh, sorry, you asked the question. You can't use your own domain until, yes, you need a deployment because we set up your own infrastructure. I mentioned that it's single tenant. So it actually costs money to set that all, all up, uh, which is why we want you to, to move to a paid plan to be able to do it. Otherwise you can work in the free app.buzzy company and that which obviously won't be in your own domain until you move to your own deployment. Cool. Um, Did anyone else have a question? Uh, is there any further consulting if needed after this presentation? Sorry, is there any, where was that there? Trying to find the question. Oh, uh, again, can people, um, 
ask us further questions or consult. Yeah, yeah. Just, just look, hit us up. We've got a Discord forum as well. So please jump in there. Um, hit us up at supported Buzzy company or, or buzzy.buzz. Um, and yeah, just reach out. I'll post some links in the um, chat. Um, Kyle, we'll, we'll, can I make that presentation available to everybody? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if did you have, um, uh, you could post a link to it in the chat if you had it on a drive somewhere, or if you had a, let me do that quickly. Let me just export this. Um, stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Uh, that amazing presentation, Adam, that was really, really impressive. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's the first time I've seen Buzzy and it's uh, truly a, a full a full stack development platform. It's, uh, I was very impressed by it. Well, thank you. Um, I just put it into the chat. I don't know if it just says a PDF, it's like 900K, so it's not massive. I don't know if, uh, if that works people if they want to download it from there i'll test it yeah i could download it thank you very much adam that was an amazing presentation thanks a lot for no worries replying to my questions as well cool thanks thanks uh bye behalf thank you very much awesome well thank you everybody for uh joining us today yeah. awesome thank, thank you. you you guys take care yeah okay. thank you Hey Kyle, is anything else you need from me? Are we done? We're good? No, no, that's all that's all good, mate. Thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. Let, let us know if you got the recording. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Uh I'll, it's yeah, we have it on uh the cloud, so I can uh, I can share it out. Brilliant. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks, See ya. Kyle. Cheers, bye.